This segment is brought to you by Jig Masters. Step up your game with high quality performance jigs, spinner baits, buzz baits, and more from JigMasters.com. And always, when in doubt, get the jig out. Bass Kayak and Beers is sponsored in part by Douglas Rod. Go to DouglasOutdoors.com to check out their full lineup and locate your nearest authorized dealer. What's going on, boys and girls? Welcome once again to the Bass Kayak and Beer segment again. And uh, we got a special guest, as always. Erin Mathis is going to be joining us in a couple of minutes. She is one of the um, judges for the Save JT tournament that's going on. She's also a tournament director in Utah. And we're going to be talking about how she got into kayak fishing Um tournament fishing and being a tournament director and you know a couple of interesting tidbits about how to fish in utah never thought utah is a bass fishing um scene but i'm pretty interested in what um what's gonna you know what we're gonna learn from fishing for bass in utah as a lot of you know Catherine fields is from utah she actually started in this club that erin um actually directs so it's gonna be a cool Cool information that we're going to be sharing. And uh, so without further ado, let's bring in Erin Mathis. Erin, how are you doing today? I'm great, Amanda. How are you? Very good. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here. So Erin, before we get started on anything else, let's talk a little bit about you. Tell us a little bit about you, how you got into fishing, kayak fishing, and then being a tournament director. Yeah, sure. Um Funny enough, I actually didn't fish a lot as a kid, um, but I was always been a tomboy, played sports, always loved the outdoors. I was in Arizona though, and with heat, not a lot of lakes around Phoenix. I, uh, yeah, I just didn't finish a ton. Came to Utah and um, I had went to school to be an engineer and for graduation, I bought myself, I'd purchased a lifetime Tamarack before this and caught one bass on it and I got super excited. But for my graduation, I was like, I need something more stable. You know, I want to be able to stand up in it and really start fishing. Didn't realize kayak fishing was a sport. And so I went and bought a Hobie from Shields. And um, yeah, so I started kayak fishing just on my own. And somebody directed me to Kayak Fishing Utah um, Facebook page. And they started doing tournaments in 2018. And I joined their very first tournament and I haven't missed one since. I was angler of the year the first year. And nice. yeah, it was a lot of fun beating all the boys. And uh, <laughs> But now it's just been a blast. I um, I did that in 2018, which qualified me for the uh, national championship for kayak bass fishing in um, Louisiana. It was Caddo Lake and five surrounding lakes. And so I dedicated my 2019 to fishing Caddo Lake and I went to California a bunch of times. I just gotten through a divorce and I needed to get out and find my, find myself, you know, what people do after divorces. And, and, uh, I fished probably five days a week and I was, I traveled to as many States as I could and did as many tournaments as I could. And, um, I wasn't, you know, winning, but you know, I did, I did pretty well in 2019. I had a lot of fun mid 2019 kayak fishing utah the tournament director um kind of had a couple missteps and he he didn't fish he kind of just did it for profit and so a buddy of mine um and myself went to him and asked if he would hand the club over and we were going to make it a nonprofit and try to expand it and make it more fun and give back to the anglers and he um very willfully gave it over and ever since mid 2019 the club has been ours and it's just been I kind of stopped traveling for the most part um running the club has taken up a lot of my time but it is so worth it 100 percent. so well kudos to you for that and that's I think the mentality we more we need to have more and more into kayak fishing tournaments and it's that what you just said you know do it as a non-profit organization I have no problem with um with uh any tournament director you know trying to cover the cost and maybe get something um out of it you know as long as it's reasonable yeah. a lot of people don't like the fact that well there's if there's a, like a membership fee and all that i'm like 
if there's a membership fee and that membership fee is going to go to a tournament director, I have no problem paying it as long as sure. the, 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 the tournament is run uh, smooth. I mean, not smoothly because everybody makes this mistake, but it's, <laughs> sure. it's, it's run with a way that it kind of respects the game and the sport and the, and the pastime, you know, if, if you're going to charge money and you're going to not going to do things, you know, that are not that there's mistakes because there's always mistake, but at least, you know, that it's run like legit, you know, sure. where there's not this, you know, kind of gray area. What's going on here? What, why are the rules not being fair? Why are some rules applying to this? Why? That exactly. I don't agree with, but yeah. that's like, again, props to you for, Thanks. for taking over that. And yeah. Uh, yeah, it's never easy when you get a tournament director that's not really into a sport. It's more, you know, for their own profit. And, and again, I don't know that person. I don't know what happened, but. No, I'm and he's sure. great. And I, I have to, I have to thank him no matter what we went through. I have to thank him for giving us, honestly, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have found the, the platform probably for years, honestly. And so I'm super, cause I don't watch a lot of YouTube. I'll, I'll be honest. I do now, but I didn't back then. And, I just kind of try to learn stuff on my own and, and, you know, we, we do charge a membership fee, but I, we do things like we bought, you know, sure. I bought myself a kayak cushion as well with kayak fishing Utah. To me, it's promotional, not, to, but we also bought one to give away. Um, we buy a lot of promotional things to give away. Um, our permits here are actually pretty hefty. So a lot of the money goes towards that, but all of that money, you know, like I, like I said, I think I got a kayak cushion out of it and, I think we've paid for maybe one or two campsites that I wouldn't normally travel to, but we like to feed our anglers after the tournament and I'm hauling so much stuff. So I have to bring my trailer. I bring my dog, Hobie, that's her name. <laughs> and, nice. uh, yeah. and so um, with all of that, I wouldn't normally camp if I was just competing, but because I have to bring everything, sure. The club paid for one night of camping, you know, and there are, they, uh, we're very transparent about that stuff. So that's, that's good. good. Yeah, that makes me happy knowing that uh, things are being run yeah. in, in a smooth way, and it's putting the anglers first. Yeah. How hard is it for those the, for those of us that have never done, you know, um, tournament directing? And we've talked about this on the OG show with Brian Schiller. A lot of times we refer to it as being armchair directors, kind of like Monday morning quarterbacks or armchair quarterbacks <laughs> you know, for those football fans. Sure. What goes on into being a tournament director for your club in Utah? You know, what are some of the, the works and the challenges that you have to face? Yeah, I mean, so at first our club was everybody in you. This is the reason why I took Angler of the Year. I spent the most time on the water, I believe, out of all the people that were signed up at that year. I don't think anybody really um, knew how much they were going to want to get into at that point. Um, as the years progress, these people have far surpassed me, and I'm so proud of them all. They're just incredible anglers now, and they're they are traveling all over the country. Um, but you know, it 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 started off as a fun club. People, not to say it's not still fun, but um, everybody, if you let something go, most people didn't notice. Hence, the old director or whatever. But you know, those of us who are a little more competitive, we were like, hey, you know, if you apply this rule to one, you have to apply it to all things like that. But um, so it really is my, my partner, his name's Joe Randall, his, uh, his shoot fish life. He's got a lot of stuff on YouTube. He's great. But um, we don't get on the water sometimes till an, af an hour after everybody launches, because sometimes people don't show up for the captain's meeting in time. And, and I, I don't, I feel bad. So I'll kind of stick around till they get there, or I'll have them come meet me on the water. And then one of at least one of us, if not both of us will get off the water an hour to two hours later. The reason for that now is um, we were noticing that people weren't coming to the awards ceremony. Let's take COVID out of this whole thing because that's a whole different situation. <laughs> but mm -hmm. um, people weren't people weren't coming to the awards ceremony, especially if they didn't win. And so um, even though we were giving out things at the awards ceremony and you had to be present to win. So we tried to make it more family oriented. Um, Utah, um, is um, more heavily than LDS state. We have lots of huge families in our club and I, and I love that. And I wanna include everybody because um, we'll talk about junior league, I'm sure at some point, but um, I wanna get everybody's families involved. I wanna get the kids involved, even their wives. The, I wanna make sure the wives are comfortable with me 
Um, I know sometimes being a woman in the fishing world, some jealousy could happen and, and it's not, you know, based on what I look like. It's just the fact that there's a woman on the water with them. So I want the wives to be comfortable with me. So I, we try to meet them all. We end up feeding them all. Like I said, at the end, we make sure that the families are fed, the anglers are fed and everybody has water, especially after a hundred degree summer day on the water. So it's, it takes a lot out of us. We've got, um, now we went from, I think, 15 or 18 members we now have over 80 and wow. um yeah and you don't have to be a member to fish but you get a ten dollar discount if you do and you're in the running for aoi so anybody can actually fish our tournament you don't have to be an actual member but um so some of our members started getting a lot more competitive and um you know we've had incidences this year in particular where um, I was threatened to be sued at one point. <laughs> you know, we we handled it, you know, as gracefully as possible. Um, honestly, it was something that wasn't written down in the rules on my end. I set it at a mandatory captain's meeting, but I didn't DQ him when he didn't show up. So honestly, that was my fault. I didn't follow my own rules. And, you know, you just, I had to own up to my mistake. But, you know, we we moved forward. And I think we're a stronger club because of it. We were very transparent about the whole situation. Um, unfortunately with one of our junior leaguers, um, he came out on the water without a life jacket and without a parent nice. with him. And unfortunately it was not his first offense. So I, was, I actually cried a lot that day. I had to kick my first junior leaguer out of our club and it was, it was heartbreaking to me, but it was a liability for us, honestly. So those are just some of the things that are the bad side. Now flip that around and I've had... I mean, those are the days that I've I've called my buddy Joe, and I'm like, I want to quit. Let's let's just dissolve the company. <laughs> just you know, I'm emotional. I've had a long day at work, whatever. But um, but you know, the the good times heavily outweigh the bad, and it makes it a thousand percent worth it. So. Yeah, that's and like I said, it's it's one of those things where not everything going to go smoothly. We we have a tournament over here. Um. Texas Kayak Championship, they went through a hiccup and it was the same thing, pretty much a carbon copy of what, you know, based on what you just told me that happened here and it got resolved, you know. Yeah. Although with a little bit of help of KPN, of course, <laughs> it's always <laughs> on top of all those things, but uh, but it got resolved, you know, yeah. and it happens. To me, um, as long as there's transparency and there's a yeah. there's a conversation and and, you know, get to solve it. I think we can move past that. And totally I think more agree. than anything, when there's not transparency, when there's not ownership of one's mistake, whether it's an angler or a tournament director, that's when things get a little dicey and then get things get a little cl clouded. And 100%. that's never good. But yeah. like you said, it's the the good outweighs anything else. Now, you also mentioned um, that you're running a youth tournament. Tell us a little bit about the youth tournament what is what's the goal with the youth tournament and what are the expectations that you want for it as far as it's growing yeah so you know i actually don't really have much expectation other than i just want to get more kids involved um I, unfortunately it's mostly kids whose parents are already in the club i mean we 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 promote really well but if you if you aren't already in the club you don't really have a knack not, or a, i should say a want for tournament fishing right um we do have a couple kids that their parents come out on the water with them. They, they don't fish tournaments or anything. So basically we take, it's, we're probably going to adjust this in the future, but we have, we go from ages three to 15 and um, we have a three-year-old who goes out on the water, by the way, he took second place in our last tournament. He has his own kayak. He paddles out there. He stands and fishes on it. And then when he's three, tired, years three, Three years old. Oh my God. He's incredible. His name's uh, Loomis Russell, and he is one of my favorites. Um, the most excited little redhead kid. We, he got his first medal this last tournament. He goes, look, everyone, I got a medal. It was like the most precious moment. But, um, you know, he fishes all day with his dad. Well, I shouldn't say all day. He fishes till about noon with his dad. And then when, like any three-year-old gets tired, he lays down in his kayak. His dad ties him up. And uh, his kid Loomis takes a nap and his dad keeps fishing the tournament. <laughs> so, <laughs> it really is. It really is a blast. So we, the, the goal really is, and thank you, Dwayne Wally with Tourney X for um, sponsoring our juniors. We have a lot of other really great sponsors that have given us 
um, cash sponsorship. So these kids are going to get some high quality performance shirts from Threadfin Apparel, Chase Tanner's um, company. And then they're getting some uh, gym. Um, I actually just got them in the mail, some gym bag with the, we have a junior league logo on it. And um, so really it's just about getting the kids on the water. They fish for free. Um, and really it's just about teaching them how to properly take pictures, some that fish, getting them the experience and especially just spending time with their parents. That's like, I feel like that's number one, you know, just taking your kid out and spending that time with them and grinding it out with your kid. And it's just, it's a blast for the kids. They really enjoy it. And, um, you know, we have medals and trophies for them at the end. We, I uh, introduced a junior league five gallon bucket. And so basically I asked all my adult anglers, please go home, find all of your unused lures or anything you want to donate. I said that we keep AOI points for the juniors. Last year, our um, AOI kid went home with a $500 gift certificate to Sportsman's Warehouse. Nice. <laughs> yeah. And so this year we're, we're going to do some sort of gift certificate, but we also did this. I said, um, let's fill up this five gallon bucket and with lures and the AOI kid will get that. First tournament, that bucket was filled. I was like, awesome, let's fill as many more as we can and we'll just let all the other kids split it. And so that's that's kind of where we're at right now. It's just get them that experience because once they turn about 15 or um, so after 16 or whatever, they should be ready to join our tournaments. And honestly, some of these 10 to 15 year olds are kicking all of our butts anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> it really is, a, it's a good time. That's awesome that you're running doing that because I think that's very important for the growth of the sport. And one of the things that I've always mentioned on my podcast and any of the podcasts I've been on Paddle and Finn is like, I'm here for the sport, you know, not necessarily do I want to be recognized as a great angler and win some tournaments? Of course. Why, sure. why else yeah. would I be doing here? <laughs> I mean, that's not, you know, let's not be hypocrite. But more than anything, I want to see the sports grow and Yes. In, in, in in an organic way, fair way. And there's a lot of changes coming, a lot of stuff that worries me about, uh, you know, um, how it's going to grow. And, you know, uh, now that it's gotten popular, companies and organizations that are getting involved, you know, mm -hmm. I want you know, you can't stop them, but you want to make sure that at least try to have the best intentions as far as the yes. growth of the sport and the, and the anglers that are putting the work out there, you know, competing and traveling. Yes. But what you're doing, and by the way, shout out to Dwayne Wally, who's uh, sponsoring that. That is big of him, you know. He's amazing. He, I know he gets, I, from my part too, a little bit of criticism for, um, you know, some <laughs> of the stuff on Bass Masters and stuff like sure. that. But you know, I've always said if if there ever was a Hall of Fame kayak fishing, what Dwayne Wally has done with Tony X, kind of in front of the scenes and behind the scenes, showing for first pilot Hall of Famer. So shout out to him for for yes. that. And he's also um, um, uh, sponsoring the Save the JT tournament, which we'll be talking about in a few awesome. minutes. Cause I know you're one of the judges. Yeah. But that's great. First of all, going back in circle with the Juice tournament, I think. Not only does it help the sport, but it helps the kids, you know, be outside, you know, in this yeah. era of technology, when you see so many kids just get so self-absorbed with um, online gaming and stuff mm -hmm. like that, you know, we need um, this little bit of uh, getting them back on the water or getting yeah. them back out outdoors, you know. Absolutely. It's one thing or another. Yeah, That's we're we're averaging like, I think we're averaging 10 junior league um, competitors per tournament. I think I have 16 in my club right now. I think last year we had eight. So, it, you know, it's doubled. And I just hope it keeps growing. And I hope they tell their friends and their friends' friends. And, and you know, it's, I don't know. It's just, it's, that's probably been my um, my most, like, joyful moments is watching these kids come up and, and just, like, look at these medals. Like, oh, my God, you know. <laughs> my adults are like, cool, another medal, you know. <laughs> So I don't know. I just, it really is, is the greatest joy for me and, and watching them pull on these fish and just get really stoked on is, I don't know. It's, it's a blast. So going back to being in Utah, what, what drove you to do bass fishing in Utah? You know, I have this concept that bass fishing in Utah is almost non-existent, but tell us, <laughs> 
you know, tell us for those that are ignorant about this, <laughs> how has bass fishing in Utah gotten so popular and, uh, you know, when did it all start it? Yeah. Um, so I actually started, um, one of my old neighbors, they had a couple bass boats and they took me out and, um, it was the first time I ever bass fished and, I realized it wasn't just sitting there with my beer and a bobber on my lawn chair, trying to pick up some trout or whatever would bite. This, this required technique and finesse, Utah finesse. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> um, you know, it, it took, it took a lot of um, skill, honestly, you know, and sure you catch your accidental bass when you first start, but man, there was so much to learn. I think that's what really intrigued me. And even though I was catching 12 inch, eight inch stinks constantly, it, um, I don't know, it just, it became an obsession of mine. And as soon as I got in that kayak, because I didn't have a boat, I couldn't afford one. As soon as I got in that kayak and this fish is, you know, this little 13 inch fish is turning the bow of my kayak. I'm like, this is incredible. Like the, you're not going to feel a thrill like this on a bass boat, you know? And I'm not saying I'm not knocking bass boat fishing. Cause I love doing that as well, but I don't know. There's just something about doing it on a kayak and, and we do have plenty of bass here. Utah does not do a great job of conserving our bass. We are very much known for fly fishing trout state. Mm -hmm. And, um, we, we have a beautiful, beautiful trout here. Um, but we're working really heavily with the DNR to try to conserve our bass. We've been giving them some of our um, information as far as lengths and where they're caught. So I've been helping using Dwayne Wally's information, given it's the, the DNR, DWR here. So they can kind of um, gauge and observe where they're being caught at. Because, you know, we've probably have like, let's say one of, one of our main will have a we'll say a thousand eight to 12 inches and there's like maybe five over 18. Like it is just few and far between. We have so many small bass. It's, um, it's pretty tough, but if we, what I've noticed too, over the years, our anglers are getting so much better. They are honing in on these bigger bass and every single year we are breaking our record as far as the largest bass uh, recorded in tourney X for, for our club. So unfortunately log the largest one is 21.75. <laughs> um, oh, that's the one I caught today. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about yeah. that later too. <laughs> I was going to say, that's probably normal for you guys over there in Texas, <laughs> but, uh, for us, it's, it, that's like, that's, our, a Wednesday for us. that's, that's <laughs> our, that, okay. That's our unicorn. That's our, you know, fish of a thousand casts right there. 10,000 casts. But, um, yeah, I mean, bass fishing here is great. We have smallies and largies, and we have some really, really great lakes here, and we have some not so great ones. But it's we we try to we do six to eight tournaments a year. We, we're doing a charity tournament this year. We did an MLF style tournament this year, and uh, we try to hit a different lake every time. And and it kind of makes our most of our lakes are bowls, like deep bowls, rocky, mm -hmm. no trees, drop shot tubes ned rigging like the, bring that when you come to utah like there's there's I, I'll, okay i'm gonna tell you something super embarrassing i'm a td i've been fishing since 2018 i've never caught a topwater bass ever have you tried it though yes <laughs> <laughs> i won't say i tried for long uh, until this year and i actually hooked into a frog fish for my first time I screamed and I ripped that thing right out of his mouth. <laughs> oh <laughs> man! Yeah. But that was the coolest experience of my life. So I won't call that a catch. I did have him on for a bit, but he, I lost him before he came to the boat. Um, but that's my goal this year is just, I'm going to take a frog everywhere I go and just, and just throw it, even though I'm not, I'm not confident with it, you know? I imagine yeah. also the, the window for frog fishing there is <laughs> going to be a tiny bit smaller compared to way smaller to Southern it's, states. Like, yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, dusk to, you know, just after sunlight and then you got to go in the evening and that's really all you, that's pretty much all you have unless you get lucky. So, yeah. And even on the month, you like not only during the day, but also the, the season, for oh, yeah. vision, it's going to be a lot shorter. For going sure. back to that 20, 21 and you know, quarter bass, 
I can't even imagine how old that bass must have been for oh. a place where it's that cold, you know, where they usually hibernate on, on winter. Yeah. That fish had to be, I, and I don't know the math. I, I, I've read it somewhere, how old they, they like are by region. On, 20 or huh? 25 yeah. years old. I can't remember what yeah. it is here, but something, something crazy. Yeah. And, and we definitely, um, practice, you know, safe catch and release here. Um, I actually do, most people might hate me for this, but I actually do ask people, if you eat fish, keep your 12 inch bass, please keep them. We need, we need to get some of these guys out of here and make some room. Honestly, we've just got a, an abundance of the 12 inch smallies, especially, you know, so, but. So over there, it's more like smallmouth bass or largemouth bass that, that's more we're, predominant. We're probably 50, 50. Honestly, really? mm -hmm. yeah, we've got that, some, we've got some right. the bigger the real sorry the really um no, no. The, the much larger reservoirs hold mostly smallies and then they have a small population of larges most of the time that are weren't probably weren't supposed to be introduced and then we've some of our smaller lakes um, Sand Hollow down in St George was was once ranked 14th in the Western United States I don't know if it still is but um that's always like our state championship. It's our first tournament and our state championship tournament because we're still frozen up north. So we go, we drive six hours down south for our first tournament and then in October for our state championship. And that one's, that one's, I think that's the one that's hold, held our largest bass so far um, is Sand Hollow. And, um, but yeah, so we've got, we've got some really great largemouth um, fisheries up north and it's strictly largemouth. Um, and they do a really good job of conserving there. They're much smaller lakes, like 500 to 700 acres. So they're a lot smaller. <laughs> that 21 and, a, and three quarters, was that a uh, small mouth or a large mouth? It was a large mouth. Nice. I think our largest what? small mouth is a 19 here. I think I'd have to look that State up. State record? Oh, or no, no. I meant, sorry, I mean in KFU. Okay. Yeah, just, okay. just people, what I've seen submitted here. Yeah. So the name of the club, I'm sure you mentioned it before, but um, it's Kayak Fishing Utah, right? Correct. Yep. That's it. Do you do other, other than than bass, kayak bass fishing over there, is there any other fish that people, not necessarily your tournament, but that people targeted on kayak fishing, like trout or anything other than that? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So um, That's popular, I know. Yeah, so we do run um, a month-long tournament every single month from, I think, April through October. And we do allow all species except for carp. Um, catfish is a big one here. And the one that our club got stoked on is um, at Pine View Reservoir, which is our last tournament. And I think we have two other reservoirs in Utah, Tiger Muskie. And Pine, nice. View, Ti Pine View holds 50-plus-inch Tiger Muskie there. Wow. And I fished for tiger muskie for a week straight and didn't catch a single one. I had one, I had a couple really good follows and I had one bite, but um, uh, so many of our members caught these guys. We're talking 45 inches plus and, and it was just a, a ride for them. So that's been a big hit here recently for sure. But trout is probably, probably second. And, and um, a lot of people like to do the carp bow hunting off their kayaks here too. Yeah, they do a lot of that. I, I can't stand. I, I thank God I've never hooked into a carp. Actually, I did once, but it, thank God I was fishing for sand bass. Man, that carp! I thought it was gonna break the rod, and it came mm -hmm. off. But I, I can't stand them. I can't stand. The yeah. carp. I don't know, I don't know so why. <laughs> it is. Yeah, but they're huge over here. Yeah. Huge carp. And buffalo carps everywhere. Uh, buffalo carp. But, huh. Nice. <laughs> I actually caught a red drum today and I thought it was like, <laughs> yeah, I got like, I got like a 20 inch bass, but no, it was a drum, not a oh, red drum, just funny. a regular a common drum. Drum. Was, yeah. We don't have drums I, here. <laughs> no, that's no, fine. no drums. So let me ask you probably the dumbest question and ignorance questions. Nobody, everybody has, anybody has asked you about fishing in Utah. Now Salt Lake city, that's a real salt lake, right? That, that, <laughs> yeah. that's salt, right. There's no and fish I for apologize that. for anybody <laughs> in Utah. I know it's a dumb, dumb question, and I know I've never been to Utah. Is there any fishing in that lake? No, no I looked it up I'm when special. I got here, so don't feel bad. Um, the only thing that survives in that lake is brine shrimp. Ah, okay. 
And I think that's I think that's like your sea monkeys. So if you ever got sea monkeys for your kids oh, or whatever, yeah. Damn, for I that, think that takes me back. I, all right, <laughs> maybe not your kids these days, but for us, right when we were younger, I had sea monkeys for sure. But I'm I pretty know. sure that's yeah, you can I'm get pretty out sure of those. A box. <laughs> yeah, they're like dried up. It's like just add water. <laughs> what? Yeah. Um, so but yeah, tiny. I think I think that's what brine shrimp are because they're very, very, very small. You don't no, there's no fishing there. So that's what I figured. And again, now the, the, your table, else, your table salt probably came. <laughs> no, oh. I was gonna say your table salt probably came from that lake. So that's about nice. it. <laughs> Utah is a great place. I've been meaning to go to Utah for um, snowboarding. I love snowboarding. Oh. I always go to Colorado, but every time I get to Utah, it's it's not as accessible as right. Colorado. It's, you know, trying to get you know buy tickets. Sure. There, so. Greatest but snow on earth place. here. Yeah, I, I started off snowboarding here quite a few years ago. Snowboarding here is amazing. So. Yeah, somebody told me that one of the reasons why it's one of the best powder snow, it has to do a lot with that um, lake because yep. the some of, I don't know, I can't explain the science of it. They explained it to me, but I'm too dumb. But it has something to do with the salt in the atmosphere yeah. and the altitude and the, you know, and the precipitation yep. makes for the best powder snowed yeah for, so we call it, yeah we call it like the lake effect snow and yeah it does give it gives it that fresh powder i mean sometimes you could sink in five feet so <laughs> i know i'm getting a little bit off topic here but actually when i <laughs> lived in puerto rico and uh, uh the airline i worked for american airlines it was downsizing so i needed to get out otherwise eventually i was going to lose my job because it was downsizing so much i actually went for an interview for a job in utah and I was excited. I was like, man, I hope I get this job because I thought it was beautiful. I just saw the airport, though. Yeah. But I love snowboarding at that time. And on my way back to Puerto Rico, I got a call that I got uh, a job in Texas. So oh, wow. I okay. actually was connecting. I got off the plane from Utah, stopped in Dallas uh, on my way to Puerto Rico. And when I stopped, I got a, I had a voice message uh, that <laughs> they had just accepted me in Dallas and I had a job. So I stopped right there, filled out the paperwork, and then... I went to Puerto Rico and came back two weeks later. So oh, it was funny. Nice. I was this close to being to Utah. Well, I'm you're, you're, I, you're, I, 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 <laughs> As I was born in Texas. I've never really enjoyed Texas too much. I also never fished in Texas. So now that I'm older, I'd probably enjoy it a lot more. But uh, yeah, you did. You, you got the upside of the bass there for sure. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Not a lot of snowboarding here, though. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> well, talking about we were talking about this before we started recording. Now you guys are going through some record breaking like heat wave that I was like stunned when you told me about it. I'm like, <laughs> how is that? Tell us a little bit about that. And yeah. how's that affecting fishing? Um, so our um we're in the worst drought we've ever seen, actually. And um we hit record highs, I think it was two weeks ago. We hit 107 in Salt Lake City. My and God. and that is just like I think I told you before. I'm from Phoenix. I'm used to 120, you know. But the when I've been here since 2007, so I'm definitely acclimated here at this point. And I've been dying. I mean, it is just absolutely horrible. But it, it's unfortunate because we didn't get a lot of snow this year. Snowboarding was horrible this year, and so our reservoirs are so low. Um, they're low and they are warm and we are seeing a lot of dying fish right now. It's really uh, upsetting. The bass seem to be doing okay. The trout are getting stunned and actually our tiger muskie are having a really hard time right now. And so the, the water levels we're talking 30 feet below normal. Um, you know, there nobody's allowed to water their yards right now, but at the same time, like, strips parking strips in between the the street and the front yards are catching on fire that's how dry it is it's it's pretty scary here right now and i'm just i'm crossing my fingers we've had a couple semi rainy days but we need a good good storm here it's getting it's making me nervous for sure yeah definitely especially do you live in like uh area to, for how do i say this like a risk for wildfires uh, I do not. No, I, I I lived more northern Utah um, and moved down here just a couple years ago. But I'm more in the city now. Um, before I was definitely closer to. I was right on uh, upside of the mountain and next to a bunch of farms. So if the mountain caught fire, it definitely would have. It would could have came down to where I was for sure. So yeah, it's pretty sad. 
Yeah, that's crazy. Talking about um, heat wave, like we haven't hit 100 degrees here, here in Texas. Not that I know of. We, I think we've come close. Maybe we hit 100 degrees, one or two, but definitely not 107. Whew. That's crazy. And it's not even, that was, that was before July. Sure. It's July now, but it, um, yeah, yeah. When, you know, we're talking about June that you hit yeah. 107. Wow. Yeah, it was in June. Yeah. And, and I think the last time we hit that was in uh, 64, 1964. And wow. that was recorded in July. So we're actually looking at an even hotter July. I'm, I'm, that's what they say. I'm just hoping that they're wrong. So <laughs> we are technically the desert, even though we have these beautiful rocky Wasatch Mountains here. And it's still kind of greenish. Everything's turning brown now. And, and this is the point where we start waiting to watch the helicopters taking the buckets up to the top of the mountain to douse out the fire. So yeah, it's crazy. Hope everything works out and you get some rain soon and nobody yeah, gets, me too. You know, severely I affected think, yeah. by any of this. Definitely. We'll survive either way. <laughs> but going back to talking about that 21 and, and three quarters, how old it is. I actually, you got to judge my fish today for the same <laughs> JT. Um, and you've, disqualify one of my fish which i i i it's my fault let's get that out of the way <laughs> it's funny because i was like daniel purse like you know um your next guest is her math is one of the judges at the uh <laughs> take your teeth like i know she just disqualified my fish I'm about to cancel her. <laughs> i know well it's funny as i i knew you were armando and i couldn't i couldn't exactly remember your last name because i think on facebook it's you have a middle name in there or, or something and That's, so i was and so i was yeah. like is this the same one? I immediately go to my messages and I was like, do I disqualify this? I feel so bad. <laughs> and I was like, I have to. <laughs> so, no, and so it was my fault. <laughs> I cut off the last letter of the ID yeah. tag. And I was, and I noticed as I'm posting, I'm like, well, you know, I just posted a fish about 15 minutes early. <laughs> they can tell, you know, it's the same tag. It's just, I cut off. but I was, I was I like, know. and it was only like a 14 and a half. I'm like, I'm just posting because it's the first day and I want to get on the board, you know. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? You but you would have like, you would have called it no problem yeah, anyway. I would have I'm expecting to <laughs> call it. It's a non-issue. But know. it's funny because that's like it took a while for you to disqualify it. I'm like, I wonder if <laughs> like going over, like they're gonna give me a break on this, and I will finally like an hour later <laughs> predictably disqualified. So it was I, funny. I, I had a bucket of fish that I was just kind of set off to the side and, and was like, all right. So I had to ask the tournament directors a few questions to make sure I was right on some of the rules. And, and um, you know, somebody was using a fish stick by um, uh, Yak Gear. And so I had to disqualify all his fish. I think he was very upset. Um, but, you know, it was in the rules. It was in the captain's meeting. Um, you know, What's the fish stick? It's like a measuring board. Yeah, oh yeah, it's just a measuring board, but it's one that folds up. And so they used to uh, allow yeah, that, and yeah. they allowed that in KBF last year, and we allowed it as well. But I only ever had one member that ever used it, and I hated judging on it. I just felt like you could have modified it so easily. But yeah. anyway, so um, I had to disqualify. He had two over twenty, and I felt oh, horrible, yeah. but. You know, <laughs> it's like, you read the rules, man. I'm so sorry. But um, he was pretty upset. I I figured you'd be cool about it. Um, you know, and, and again, it, <laughs> yeah, right? exactly. It is a the, charity tournament. The real you winner know? is JT. Oh, yes. Thank you. And so it's, I, it's I know. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I interrupted. No, you're right. No, you're totally right. It's just, I, I was talking to Ryan Lambert um, right before I got on with you. And, and we're just like, you know, what do we do about the, because there's, there's more than one upset person. And he's, we're just like, this is a charity tournament. There's no need to try and cheat or, you know, just, just okay, this is the first day. Guess what, dude, you got 30 more days to get yeah. more fish in and you're saving a kid's life. That should be your number one prize anyway. Who cares? Yeah. Who cares? I'm signing up tonight. I, I, I put up six prize packages, me along with a bunch of random people actually in Utah and so we, I said, as long as we get 35 anglers from Utah, we'll give away these six prize packages. But I wasn't going to sign up until I got those 35 people. So now that we have them, I'm going to sign up tonight. I'm not going to submit a single nice. fish. Utah showing up. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, we got it. You know, we definitely got to support it. It's funny because in the 
when I was done fishing, I look up and it says largest, and it still says on the tourney X, it says largest fish. You can't see it from here. Never mind. Oh, I can't. It's 21 <laughs> and 75. And I was going to go on the KBM page and I was, I know I'm going to get roasted for it, but I figured <laughs> it's fun. It creates, you know, little vibe. People talk Sorry. about the tournament, not about me, but I was going to be like, you know, I'm here for JT, but I'm also here for the belt. So I'm taking name and kicking yes. ass. And then I saw Derek <laughs> Mills. Yeah, 24 and a half. I'm like, you know what? I'm I know. <laughs> you, know what, gonna... you know what? You know what? You know what's really funny? I had to DQ that one first because the, the I don't 20... know if you saw the 24 at first. I had to DQ it because he um, he blacked out the baits in the picture. So it's a se it's technically a second generation photo at that point. You have to submit the original photo. Well, he took it and scribbled over the baits because he didn't want anybody to see what he was using. And uh -huh. so I had I had to DQ it for that reason. And I said, you can revert the picture back to normal and submit that, but I cannot take this this picture with this giant black you know swirl on it. <laughs> so yeah, because I think it it removes the GPS tracking too. Like if once you edit it, it, it can. It yeah, it yeah. can. Yeah, it's so. funny because since Derek Miller up um, uh, showed me it up, I'm gonna say what it, it's the power baits, guys. Look, it's right here, Derek Miller, so everybody can see it. <laughs> power baits. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That zoom worm. <laughs> Why would you put, like, seriously, that's not a big secret, though. <laughs> no, I get it if maybe you rigged something like yeah. Kate talked about in her, for her last tournament, like her Kate rig, and you don't want anybody to see, yeah. like, sure, but get it out of the picture then. That's on you, <laughs> not, not, you know. <laughs> that's funny on the charity uh, tournament. I uh, know. That's cool. I wonder, where's Derek Miller from? Shout out to Derek Miller. Great job, though. 24 um, and a quarter, man. That's going to be awesome. Yeah, that thing was a tank. Uh, yeah. it will, I guarantee that will not be the biggest one we see. We're going to hit 1,000 anglers. Easy. Yeah. And I, with 1,000 people, I, I'm betting we're going to see at least a 27-incher this month. We Good have Lord, to. do you imagine? Uh, I, yeah. So my buddy Joe Randall and I, we went to uh, Lake Berryessa in California for the uh, KBF tournament there in 2019. Pre-fishing, he caught a 26.75. Wow. Oh, my God. Pre-fishing. We could have gone home that day. That was the best day of our lives, and I didn't even catch the damn thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> But, yeah, so I'm excited to see some really hefty fish yeah. this tournament. I think it's going to be huge, ridiculous bags. And it's, you know, it's all for fun and bragging, right? <laughs> and, um. Uh... And I'm sure the guys from Florida, which so I think Conrad Benetti, actually, he just posted <laughs> on KB and he's signed up, but he, yeah. he doesn't think he's going to be able to fish. But anyways, those guys over there, they got a shot at, you know, they got 27. Oh, yeah. Bass Absolutely. All the time, so. And his little honey hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> oh, I got to give him crap. Conrad and I have, have uh, we have. <laughs> I love Conrad. I had him on my podcast. I think he's great uh, for the sport because he oh, gives us something to talk about. He's a great and, – yeah. and I like that he as much trash talking that he does, <laughs> he does give props when he loses. And, I know. Uh, he's so he's, he's pretty cool. I like at, for, at first I had an issue with him because, I don't know, something was said about he could get any girl he wanted, and I, was, I went <laughs> off. I was just like, no, 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 no. I will never teach my kids to be like you. And, like, I was like, you remind me of <laughs> – Michael Bates from Psycho, like, oh my God, this whole thing went on, like, oh, he, oh, he I got remember that. yeah, that was me. I remember that. He <laughs> talked. He actually talked about it on the podcast. He actually talked about it. He was so upset about that. It's I so know. funny. And him and I, I actually, him and I, we don't talk like good friends, but him and I throw shit and sorry stuff at each other back and forth. And and I, I adore the guy. He's. He, you're right. He does good for the sport in a way that most people just aren't there. Right? We have we have enough humble people. Let's get them trash talkers out and and you know he's you know the way he holds his life jacket and exposes himself to the camera. Yeah, good old Conrad. <laughs> it's there's a certain point where it gets like you know we can get stale. Like yes, we, you know we we want to you know the community to grow organically mm -hmm. and be all inclusive, yes. bring everybody in. But at the, at the same point, it is competitive. You know, yes, there, is, there is a certain level of 
trash talking that should yeah. happen in order to keep things, you know, a little spicy. Yeah. I think when it crosses the lines, when people, and I'm not talking about, uh, you know, your scenario with uh, Conrad, but when other people kind of like um, attack um, other people's character. You know, oh, that's sure. that to me, it's like, you know, oh, no, and that's totally, me oh, I fishing, it. but that's Yeah, it. oh no, and, I, and that's totally what I did. I, I got emotional about it because I, I was like, this is the first guy I've seen who's more cocky than confident. Like, yeah. cockiness, get out of my life. I don't want anything to do with it. But, you know, now now he's just got this, he has this role to play. And, you know, I, I actually love him for it. And I, I appreciate him and the sport. And, and him and I have come to terms. And, and, you know, I was emotional at the time, just trying to defend like women at the time or whatever. I don't know what the heck I was going through. But either way, <laughs> Conrad and I are buddies now. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. I remember him talking about it. He was so upset at, at uh, Jeff and Ryan, too. Quick it was so funny because he went off. And then he was like, oh, I didn't notice that he, they did send me a message, but I didn't see the message. I'm like, all this time you're going off on them, and you didn't see oh, that they send you a message to come out. It was, it's funny. But I yeah. love Conrad. I need to bring uh, him to the show again. He's pretty pretty. Oh, he's a good, yeah. He's a good guy. I appreciate him now. You learn, do, yeah. you, you love to hate him, right? Yeah. It's yeah, <laughs> he grows on you. <laughs> or you hate no, to love him, one of the two. <laughs> no, but very young. Oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> never, never got to hear the other side of the story till now. So I, I'm glad yeah. you, we, we got into that rabbit hole. I'll, I'll so, admit when I'm being a jerk. So that was me. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he deserves some of the slack that's thrown his way. You know, Probably. you gotta, you know, once you. <laughs> If you dish it out, you have to be able to take it. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> so talking about other great anglers, I know Catherine Fields, she started at yeah. your club, and now she got uh, third place on Cham Champlain at yeah, the Hobie like BOS. Mm -hmm. And to me, um, Hobie BOS is mo the most, um, I think, challenging tournament out there. The best run in my but I 100% agree. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Most prestigious, maybe. I mean, yeah. you, you're going up against the top anglers of the country, and these people travel all around the country just to follow the BOS. And um, now kudos to Kate. You know, she um, – I remember when she started, she was scared to kind of come out a little bit on the water. You know, she was uh, afraid that the um, the guys would treat her differently because she was a woman, and – and and there was me and I probably just still one other woman in the in the club at that time. She might have been the third woman in our club. And you know, we try to open her with or welcome her with open arms. And um, you know, I know she has her um she has her the issues that she's had with her back and stuff. And actually it's because of Kate we started um offering food and water after tournaments. There was one tournament where she had severe heat stroke and like almost didn't make it home. She pulled over and like threw up and like all these things, you know, she was dealing with her pain. Plus the sun here is ridiculous. And so, um, she definitely had a harder time at first, you know, she was queen of dinks. That's if you ever listen to anything from her beginning, it's, she's always queen of dinks and, and she progressed. Definitely. She took home. I think her first check ever was from, uh, one of our tournaments in 2019, maybe, yeah, it was 2019. It was right before she traveled. And then she just started traveling and just growing her um, her arsenal of, of ways to fish. And, and yeah, Utah's definitely very proud of Kate. Yeah, there's very, she's come a long way. And oh, her perseverance, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. it's not, not just, you know, quitting your job and, going out there and fishing it's just her dealing with you know her surgeries and yeah. you know like you said her her health issues that that just don't go away that easily and yeah. it really really affects um her mobility and how she can go out fishing so yeah i mean sh huge shout out to her i'm sure she's an inspiration to a lot of people absolutely and, some, and i the way she's progressed i visualize her transcending the sport meaning she was going to be an influence to a lot of people not just in the kayak fishing community but out there that people that hate kayak fishing may not be your thing but you may have something else you want to aspire and she could be a great Absolutely. um inspiration and that and i'm yeah. proud of you guys too because you, you kind of like helped her usher in into that tournament scene being that she started in kayak fishing Utah. So yeah. you shout out to 
you know, to kind of like embracing her and kind of like helping her um, get her feet wet literally and figuratively into the kayak fishing tournament. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, you know, I like to think we played a part. I, I honestly think even if it wasn't for us, she probably would have gone that way eventually. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she has, um, she definitely has a drive and, um, you know, talking about her surgeries and stuff. I just, I, this is like the, the most amazing thing about the kayak community is she had such a great support system and guess what? They were all kayakers, you know, it was Christine Fisher and, and, um, gosh, who else? There were so many other, other friends who were, who were there to support her through her surgeries and, and get her through those things that, um, and, and allowed her to get back out on the water and fish. And so the kayak community is just, it's amazing. I mean, look at the Save JT tournament. That, that's just another, you know, just to show you how much money and how many people are dedicated to helping each other out. It really is an amazing community. Yes, it is. And uh, and again, for those that uh, haven't heard, if you live on the rock uh, and you're involved in kayak fishing, go check out the Tourney X um, tournament, Save JT. Ryan Lambert and Jeff have doing a great job of promoting mm -hmm. this and organizing this. Again, shout out to Dwayne Wally, who's um, uh, have you know? There's no tourney. Uh, they're not keeping any of the any of the tourney X fees. Everything is gonna go to the Borovka family yeah. and JT. And we can go on and on about that. <laughs> but check out the the podcast by KBN or the podcast that I did mm -hmm. with uh, Jason Borovka. Either ones, it doesn't matter. Just listen to it. Um, and go to Tourney X and search for Save JT Charity Tournament and sign up if you can. It's only fifty dollars. All proceeds go to uh, the Borovka family and helping save J JT, their young son, who suffers from one of the most rarest disease uh, and honestly, one of the cruelest disease I can think of just because it targets at such a young age. And uh, if even if you don't fish, you qualify for the drawings. Uh, I think there's I think there's uh, uh, and I, I hesitate to mention the price because I'm not sure what all the prices are and which prices mm -hmm. are going to go to the drawings and which prices are going to go to the winners, you know, the placements at the tournament. Sure. But regardless, it's go to KBN page, find out what the details are. Trust me, you're going to love it. And more than anything, the real winner here is JT. So go sign up. It's only $50. Um, and if you can't afford the $50, go to www.savejt.com. If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, you can see it scrolling down on the bottom. You can donate, you know, whatever you can. Anything is going to help. So huge shout out okay. to the guys at KBN for that. I know so, for a fact that if you don't right. fish, you're automatically in a drawing for at least an old town kayak. I can't remember which That's one. What I understand now. But that one for sure. And then yeah. there's many other prizes too. But yeah. I think it's Orion coolers. Also, there's um, <laughs> there's going to be, for those that love hunting, there's going to be hunting and fishing trips mm -hmm. that are going to be auctioned. Auction. Yeah. Um, and I don't think you have to participate in the tournament. So if no. you are looking for, you know, take part on a hunting safari or guided hunting to uh trip or uh fishing trip go check them out and again i don't know the details of of what they are and which one i know there are a few of them but if you're into that go check them out consider participating in the auction as well and you might you know you might get a fishing or hunting trip of a lifetime and save dating which is more important yes way more important <laughs> so erin We've had you here for the longest time, for an hour. Thank you for what you're doing uh, with the youth in Utah for promoting the sport in Utah. I think it's very important that the sport grows not only in in its where it's popular, but more imp importantly, the places that are not as popular. Sure. Uh, you know that I think is very important, and and not not to discredit Utah and for kayak fishing, but it's obviously, it's not one of the first places it comes to mind, but yeah. hopefully with the work that you're doing and the, and Catherine Fields kind of elevating Utah anglers to, you know, the national stage, we can, in a few years, we can think of Utah as one of the premier uh, hotspots for kayak bass fishing. So great job. Yeah what you're doing and we really appreciate it you know we want to see the sports grow we want to see it become bigger better and more prices for those that participate and if you don't participate in tournaments also you know 
get to get out there and be on the water, enjoy something different, get out of your comfort zone. So. Absolutely. So, awesome. Aaron, well, thanks for out. having me on. No, it's my pleasure. I want to give you a few more minutes to for you to thank anybody that you want to thank. I know it's a lot of people that <laughs> have been doing this, even though you kind of been the the face of kayak fishing Utah. I know there's a lot of people that you thank for the success <laughs> you have. And so go ahead and uh, take your time. Oh well, thank you. Um, number one, Joe Randall, my uh, my my co partner. I see that dog tail in the back, by the way. <laughs> I know it's, she was sleeping all this time. <laughs> I feel bad because I like I won't open the door. You know, let <laughs> Mine, <out of> the <laughs> Mine's down here chewing on her foot, Hobie. Anyway, um, so <laughs> you know, you're but I love I love puppies. Um, Joe Randall, my uh, my partner in crime with Kayak Fishing Utah. His handle is Shoot Fish Life. He has some phenomenal videos on YouTube, and he's so great. Um, Dwayne Wally for being such a support system for my club. And for my my youth group, the fact well not youth group, my junior league, um, he's he's been pivotal for me, and he's the amount of support he's always there for me on the phone, no matter what. Um, I really really appreciate Dwayne, and uh, you're good. And then um, uh, Idaho River Sports. Unfortunately, we only have big Shields and Cabela's big shops here. Um, Idaho River Sports is your mom pa shop. They're on a pond. You can take kayaks out and demo them right on their property and um they actually i'm on their fishing team and they uh have sponsored me this year and, and thanks to them i have a beautiful hobie 360 so idaho river sports please check them out if you're in the idaho utah washington area um got you we have so many sponsors this year that have just made kayak fishing utah incredible and i can't name you all but i just want to thank all of you especially the ones that are donating to our juniors um to um i know this sounds funny my ex-boyfriend brian and his two kids his two kids are in the junior league and brian comes to me with comes with me to every tournament he helps me set up he makes sure i get on the water he makes sure i'm not an angry bee and uh, and he helps and he he cooks food for us everybody afterward and he's just been um he's our third partner in kayak fishing utah honestly without it being said so i really appreciate him and, and his two kids for and during me making them get on the water, even though they've, they've been loving it lately. So um, really, I think that's it. My members, I have the best members and without them, I couldn't, I wouldn't be here. So thank you guys. And thank you for having me on. Oh, I think I lost your audio. I can't hear you. No, can't hear you. Maybe it's, is it me? What? Oh, no, I are. have my mic off. My, my, <laughs> I apologize. Uh, since I have my lovely dog kind of farm on me, I'm trying to, you can hear her footsteps. I'm like, let me open the door and get her out while you were talking. That's why you would hear it if you're not watching. If you're just listening, you're not watching on YouTube. Erin was laughing mid to her, you know, credits. And I'm trying to open the door and get the dog out of the room. So she would have came her up that I forgot to turn my <laughs> mic off. So thank oh, you. And I was going to say thank you for, for coming to the show. It's an honor to have you on the show. I appreciate Paddle and Finn. I think this is the third or fourth, um, what do you call them segments I, that I, of Paddle and Finn that I've been on. And you guys have always been so great and keep inviting me back. And I'm just very thankful. So. No, we appreciate it. And again, we appreciate all the great job that you're doing out there. So, anyways, for those out there listening, oh, I forgot to ask you what you brought it. You were a wine girl, but you brought a beer uh, to I the did. podcast. So I, I probably appreciate that. Yeah. Well, yeah this you is actually, brought a wind. Go ahead. Which one is this, that one? This Spiral is a Utah. Jetty? This, yeah, this is a Utah beer. So um Spiral Jetty. I don't know when it was created, but if you go up northern Utah, there's actually a spiral in the Great Salt Lake when the water is down, it is made out of thousands and thousands of rocks, and it is like a perfect spiral. No idea who made it or when. It is the most beautiful landmark you'll ever see. But uh, this yeah. is a this is an IPA and it's delicious. So. Nice, and it's like a forty <laughs> ounce too. Like, yeah, I had to go like, bigger, yeah. go home. <laughs> I'm off for the next four days. <laughs> kind of like set the bar high for my next guest. It's like, yeah, you're bringing a forty here. <laughs> nice, nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Aaron Math is bringing on her beer game. To the podcast. I appreciate that. Thank you. So for those out there listening, thank you so much um, for 
joining and for listening. And if you made it this far, go check out Douglas Rods. Go to douglasoutdoors.com. Check out their full lineup, the X Matrix and the LRS Rods. They also make fly fishing rods. for So for those Utah guys that are girls, I'm sorry, that are listening yeah, to the podcast, <laughs> we got some great um, fly fishing rods here in Douglas. So go check them out as well if you love fly fishing. If you're going to be on the water, please wear your PFDs. Yes. Stay safe. And make sure you make it back to your loved ones at home. So, Aaron, if you don't mind, stick around. We're going to close it out. And, Perfect. again, thank you for everyone. I am stalling because I lost the closer video. So I'll just pretend I'm talking about something. Where we go. There you go. Yak Gadget, made in America, based outside of Nashville, Tennessee. Yak Gadget offers all kinds of storage accessories, quick mount motor mounts, anchor systems, track mounted accessories, even paddles. Go to yakgadget.com and get your kayak decked out for your next trip out on the water. The 153 Bay Company, based in Troy, Ohio, make everything from plastics to custom painted hard baits. Hook them hard and hook them off. All of our baits are made to order and all of our hard baits are hand painted to order. So go to the153anglers.com to place your order today. We got the Thanks close. for tuning in to another killer episode on Paddle in Finn. Don't forget to go check out our website at Paddle, the letter N, in Finn.com. Don't forget to check out the YouTube channel at Paddle in Finn. If you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest on a future episode, feel free to email us at Paddle, the letter N, in Finn at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Paddle in Finn on Facebook and Instagram. Shout out to our show supporters, Angler, the Angler Button and app just makes for a better time on the water and creates a virtual logbook for every fishing outing out on the water. Shout out to Rocktown Adventures located in Northern Illinois for all your kayaking, camping, and hiking needs. Shout out to Jigmasters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com 